Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Monday. I hope you're having a great weekend. Uh, you know, this time of year, we're coming up to the holidays. It's, it can be rough for some people, especially 2020. I mean, it's been a rough year the whole time and it just keeps getting worse, huh? But, you know, uh, like I said, you have to surround yourself with hobbies and things that make you happy. You know, one of the things, one of my, my little shop mascot, this, uh, this little Snoopy, uh, Snoopy soap dish that I have over here is the first thing I see when I come down to uh, to the shop. And I, that always kind of puts me right in the right mood. You know, and I think back because I guess when I was growing up, you know, it was it was a little rough. You know, we didn't have a lot here, but I always liked uh, toys. And because we didn't have a lot of money for, for toys and things like that, a lot of the toys needed imagination. And I think my dad used to like to buy me toys that required imagination because he was always afraid that one day I might wind up in a POW camp <laughs> and would need my imagination just to get it through, get through the camp. You know, you know what it's like, right? Everybody knows what a POW camp is like. But, uh... So, you know, I said, maybe we should go upstairs uh, into the attic. We haven't been up there in a while. And I want to show you something that that a uh, uh, a toy that I've had. And, and this thing was just, I, I if I could go back in time and start my career all over, I would love to have been a uh, an uh, engineer that designs toys and things like that. That would be, can you imagine what a great job that is? And some of these guys were absolutely brilliant, especially growing up in the, the uh, 50s and 60s, they had these mechanical toys that were just unbelievable. And uh, to think about, you know, the design and, you know, again, you, you don't have an unlimited budget. You had to think of a cheap way to make this. And and these guys did some job because some of the toys we grew up with were just really fantastic. And we, we had a lot of time. We'd play with them for hours until we broke them. So let's go upstairs, see what we got and uh, have some okay, fun. Okay, here we are in the attic uh, for those of you new to the channel. This is where uh, you can, it's like time travel up here. I can go anywhere I want. I can go back into the uh, 40s, the 50s, the 60s, but I can escape reality up here. And that's why I come up here. So let's see what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, today we're going to be going back to 1977 and this uh, beautiful shoots away toy. And it was made by Gabriel. You could see up here, Gabriel. Gabriel was a toy manufacturer. It was founded in 1894 in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. They're still in business today. Had a terrific uh, history and uh, very successful. You can see the box here. You can see what uh, basically... A lot of times these boxes were on shelves and were meant to actually sell the product. So if you were a kid walking through a toy store... You could look at this and make it out, figure out what exactly it does, and then you would uh, talk mom into picking it up for you. Now I'd like to show you the genius of this game. First of all, you had a, uh, a small cockpit here. This was considered like a console game. In this cockpit here, you had your bomb drop or whatever uh, you were dropping at the time. You had your uh, engine start and stop, and then you had your... Uh, your direction control or a stick as it would be called in a aircraft and here was the aircraft up here now what's interesting about this uh, particular toy is you can see when I pull back on the stick it uh, moves the plane from uh, you know laterally and then uh, when I hit the drop button it would drop bombs or or shoots in this case and uh, and I'll tell you what that's about now the premise of the game was this is the uh, field that you would be flying over and uh, you could see let's say a storm blew through and it created a ton of havoc and uh, what I mean by that you can see over here we have a down chopper over here over here we have a bridge that uh, a car going off of a bridge over here uh, we have a uh, stranded people stranded on some island here we have a, a boat over here and these are all people that you had to drop your little parachute look we have a hot air balloon over here and uh, when we put this on here this would spin through a mechanical clockwork would spin and uh, these are little parachutes that you were dropped in here with supplies and everything they needed to uh, survive until help could get to them totally interesting. Now, like I said, this is a mechanical game. Everything's mechanical. And this is a clockwork mechanism. There's a clockwork under here. And when you turn it like this, it winds it up. And that's what you would do. You'd wind it up and then you would place your uh, field over here, over the top here, just like this. And, uh, and then just like that. And then when you started it, it would turn. Now here comes the real fun. Now part. these little supply chutes that came with it, you can see they had a little clip here. You see that little clip here? 
And what you would do is you would slide that onto the back of the airplane here. You see the aircraft? And you would slide this on here and you would load it up with enough chutes to complete the mission. Now here's where the absolute genius of this game comes in. Besides having the lateral control of being able to uh, move the plane from left to right, when you look through this little rubber eyepiece here, there is a mirror inside of the plane that shows you where you're going to drop down. Let me show you what that looks like. Now, when you're a young kid, you know, it's not, I'm not just a kid behind a game. I was a hotshot pilot who was on a mission to save countless lives. It was just awesome. I can remember back then. Okay, ID, settle down, gentlemen. Thanks very much for coming. As you know, a series of F4 tornadoes ripped through the Chinoa Valley today, uh, causing a lot of destruction. And our job as power rescue is to go in there and rescue them. Uh, so far, I see we have a uh, list of volunteers. That'll be uh, Squadron C, headed out by Scoutcrafter. Thank you very much. And uh, Godspeed, and let's get these people some supplies. All right, carry on, gentlemen. Rescue one, clear for takeoff runway one five. Uh, base, this is Rescue 1, ETA, 2 minutes. Base, we are over drop zone Alpha, package away. Rescue 1, excellent job, return to base. This is Rescue 1, roger that. So I ask you, when did we stop having fun? At what age did we grow up and that was it? It was done for? Well, I'll tell you what, they're going to have to drag me kicking and screaming because I am not growing up no matter what they say. Okay, I did not mean literally my back. Ow, 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 Can you imagine ow. if this is somebody's first visit to this channel? They must be going out of their mind right now. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, I picked up a pair of pliers. Uh, Years ago, I figured today we got a few minutes left. Let's take a look at them and check okay, them out. Okay, for today's project, we're going to tackle these uh, N8-7. These are a uh, pair of slip joint plies. They call them a slip joint because they do that. And uh, these are made by Pexto. Uh, Pex, Stowe, and Wilcox, a three-way merger, uh, came up with Pexto in 1870. So, uh, they, you know, the company's been around for a long time. Let's take a look at the condition of these. You could see they had the dreaded nickel plating. Nickel plating was very, uh, never really durable and uh, could, you know, cloud up, as you could see here. And it gave you marginal protection, but sometimes the plating was more problems than just the uh, polished steel. You could see here the handle uh, embellishment, but again, it's filled with the rust. And uh, this side had a small screwdriver type, but it's a little dinged up here. We'll fix that. Um, and this asymmetrical jaw has always been a try. I, I have no idea why they did this, but other than I find it interesting... And uh, I thought maybe we'd give this a shot. So take a look at what it looks like. Again, you know, interesting plies. Let's get okay, to it. Okay, we had no issues taking it apart. You could see what it looks like inside. But one thing to remember when taking it apart, I like to use a 7 16 socket. You can see here, 7 16 But this is a six-point socket. And that does give you a little bit more grip so you don't wind up rounding this over. And, uh, okay, let's clean it up. Okay, here's our post-wire brush evaluation, got rid of all the rust, 
and uh, you could see here what happens you know the nickel it, it a lot of it gets underneath and you know but the embellishments always clean up nice but uh i thought this was a number eight it turns out it's a number nine you could see there number nine and we're going to try and keep as much of this as we can it's always tough because you know we got to get under that nickel we got to take all that old nickel off and you know because all the scratches the dents the dings and especially back here you could see the you know that's all got to be taken down and redone so uh yeah let's now get you to can it. see here where we're at we got a now look look at this right it looks good but you see those pits in there it's no good you got to keep going you got to keep going and don't be stingy with the 50 50. there's a little better right a little better Now the last step on any project is to put them in your hands and feel for any sharp points, any sharp areas you have. Take a file and just uh, stroke it across and especially here where the uh, handle embellishment meets the side, uh, there's always a little bit of sharpness. So take a file and just take that right off and it, uh, you'll be much happier with the way it feels in your hand. And you know my favorite part, remember what these pliers look like before we start. We're calling this project done. Uh, you know, these Pexto number nines. Look how nice they came out, huh? Look at that. First of all, look at the lettering. I was very shocked I was able to keep that as well as I did. But the uh, Pexto, made in USA. What a nice logo on there, huh? Polished out the uh, nut front and back. Uh, how to do everything in a nice, smooth. I mean, this is super smooth. All the embellishments went over. But again, like I said, once you hit this with the sand, these get sharp. So you have to take that down so it's not sharp. Little scout crafter red really makes that pop, don't it? Look at this. It's just beautiful. Look how nice and smooth it works. Uh, these slip joints, you know, they're just, that's what they do. But it's I, I always found it unusual, the asymmetrical part of these pliers. I don't know why I'm attracted to them, but I just do like it. And again, polished everything else. Here's a nice tip. When you're going to do the tip, you have to put the pliers back together and address it to the belt center so you get these to close just like that perfect on top and what do you think of these just a nice set huh they feel good in the hand the embellishment they you know there's no war, war they're not worn at all and uh just feels really nice and just a nice buttery smooth pair of pexto pliers number nine and uh very happy with these and i was able to take care of them. remember the back was all mangled up fixed all that out right just a nice pair so put these maybe these will go into the scout crafter junior toolbox okay so in closing that was one heck of a mosh today wasn't it and uh, i hope you're a little less stressed out now than you were when you first tuned in and uh, take care i hope you have a nice day bye bye now.